Hi there, and welcome back. Now, one of the criminal organizations that is least talked about and perhaps least known is the Sacra Corona Unita, a group that found its birth in Apulia, or Puglia in Italian, in the early 1980s, although the events that led to its creation start much earlier. The Sacra Corona Unita, in fact, is not an indigenous criminal organization, but rather descends directly from the Calabrian and Drangheta with the aim of co-opting the better of other groups in the territory. The criminal influence over Puglia was in fact shared by Cosa Nostra, the Camorra and the Andrangheta starting in the 1960s, with the Cosa Nostra running activities in the provinces of Brindisi and Lecce, the Camorra in Foggia and the Andrangheta in Taranto. Puglia was a very desirable territory for the various organisations, since it had become the core centre for cigarette smuggling. Now, it has a huge coastline that obviously allows people to land during the night virtually unseen, as well as being one of the places where mafias in other regions recruited new recruits to add to their own ranks. In particular, the goal of the Indrangheta in Puglia was to prevail over the Nuova Camorra Pugliese, a direct descendant of the Nuova Camorra Organizzata, run in the same manner but autonomous from the parent group which was born from the idea of Camorista Raffaele Cutolo to expand into the Foggia area. Now, you likely have seen our video on Raffaele Cutolo, and if you haven't, you should definitely check that one out. But some sources report Christmas Eve 1981, others May 1st 1983, for that initial founding of the Sacra Corona Unita. And these are the two dates that are marked as the historic moment of the creation of the Sacra Corona Unita. This criminal outfit blossomed as a result of Giuseppe Rogoli, who was in prison at the time of its founding. Rogoli is the criminal who asked for and received permission from the ringleader Umberto Bellocco, founder of the first Indrina in Puglia, to create a new criminal group in Puglia, more independent from the already existing Andrangheta. The choice of this name finds its origins within the culture of the criminal organisations themselves. Sacra refers to the fact that to join the clan, one must perform a sacred ritual, similar to the baptism of a child in the Christian religion. Corona for the similarity between the affiliates and the beads of a rosary. And finally, Unita for the strength of the cohesion of the group itself. Well, this organization grew in the background because the fact that it was newly formed kept it under the radar for actually quite a long time. The seemingly minor threat it could present to society then caused it to gain ground on the other organisations without any particular specific event that brought it out into prominence. And what may have prevented it from becoming even more powerful, however, may have been the ongoing and above all not insignificant conflicts amongst the various internal groups. But not only that, there was also difficulty amongst the affiliates in keeping the information they received secret and perhaps also being the last organisation to appear and being preceded by the other mafias. In addition, the autonomous management of the families led to little coordination, which in turn weakened the broader organisation as a whole. A combination of factors that generated quite some chaos until, in order to precisely try to heal all those same problems, an almost compulsory internal reorganization was carried out, which then led to the rebirth in the form of the new Sacra Corona Unita. Unfortunately, this process did not resolve most of the issues that had actually been the reasons for the crisis in the first place. But even at the end of this period, the territories over which the fourth mafia or Sacra Corona Unita imposed its power are the same as we mentioned earlier, with precisely the Sacra Corona Unita replacing the other criminal organisations from neighbouring regions. With one notable addition, the province of Bari, which we didn't actually mention earlier. And if before there were different criminal groups depending on the province or slice of territory, from now on the same areas could be divided equally, but thanks to the internal divisions of the Sacra Corona Unita. Each piece of Apulia, in fact, is run by a minor organisation, but still linked to the Apulian Mafia, which, however, did not fail to have connections with extra-territorial criminals as well. 
The three main ones can be summarized as the Fodjin Society, the Bari Kamura, which has nothing to do with the Neapolitan one, and the Sacra Corona Libera. There are also other smaller groups that run the other parts of the region. Starting with the Foggia Society, this was born right at the end of the 1980s, actually in 1989. And in addition to Foggia and its province, it also has interests in some regions of central and northern Italy. It can actually be said to be a descendant of the new organised Camorra, rather than the Sacra Corona Unita. As for the Bari Camorra, this, on the other hand, has an influence exclusively related to the same metropolitan city. And the branch that's most different from the others is the Sacra Corona Libra, which came into existence because of certain disagreements with the parent organisation with respect to business matters. And these included the exploitation of underage kids to carry out their activities, and the abolition of the initiation rite in order to become a member of the group. So let's now talk about the goals of the Sacra Corona Unita. Well, unlike other organised crime groups, the Apulian one is distinguished by its goal of accumulating wealth at the expense of expanding its control over territories. And amongst the activities, thanks to which they managed to increase their organisation's wealth, are those of cigarette smuggling and drug trafficking, usury and extortion, betting, judicial auctions, and among the latest and most related to this historical moment, everything having to do with the green economy industry, the eco-industry. There's also no shortage of activities, such as those concerning murders, the exploitation of prostitution, and illegal immigration, which, especially during the 1990s, was one of Italy's main issues in terms of the arrival of people from neighbouring Albania, as well as from different Eastern European countries. So, there you have it folks, a small but fascinating insight into the Sacra Corona Unita. So do let us know if you want more info on this group, and of course we do therefore like to bring you content that you do care about most. So until next time, we'll see you next time, ciao.